you probably buy too much music gear. Or at least you think about buying music gear way too frequently. Gas, or gear acquisition syndrome, is a dangerous thing. And I want to help you gain a little bit of productive perspective on what it is, why it's important, and how to curb it when it becomes a little bit too pesky. Chapter markers are provided below based on the severity of your affliction. Gas is commonly referred to as the unrelenting urge to purchase or acquire new instruments, equipment, or other gear, with the notion that it will be that one special thing you need for that creative spark or to finally help you complete your synth setup or to make it whole so you can finally release that album you've been putting off working on for months or perhaps years. As you might be able to see, this is inherently problematic. But what might not be as obvious is that we can fight back and use it to our advantage. A little bit more on that later. So let me tell you a little bit about my experience with gas. Full disclosure, I've definitely experienced it in waves over the past five years, but I can safely say, mostly based on what I've seen on social media, is that my bouts of gas have been relatively mild. In fact, it all kind of started with social media, which is a whole other problem that I'm kind of going to get into a little bit later in the video. So my first guitar pedal was advertised to me on Instagram. It was the Old Blood Noise Endeavors Black Fountain Oil Can Delay, and I needed it. A pedal with long murky delay times that could basically just be used as a sort of ad hoc looper. It was perfect for somebody who's just getting into guitar pedals. So I got it. And this all happened as I was starting the project Slow Haze as a proper musical project. I was building up a pedal board, so it made sense to get a guitar pedal. Eventually I started getting super into guitar pedal YouTube and guitar pedal subreddits. I really fell down the rabbit hole. And naturally I wanted to build up a pedal board, but eventually I found myself spending so much time just like looking up and researching new pedals just because. You know, I didn't actually need the newest pitch shifted reverse granular delay distortion. It was just sort of inspiring to think about what something like that could do in my rig. And it was mentally easier to kind of hunt down what my sound could be without actually taking the time to work on my sound with the plenty of gear that I already had amassed. So I'm sure that's a familiar story to a lot of you. I began to buy and sell and trade multiple pedals per month actually. And luckily once I did have about 10 or so pedals in my collection, I was really comfortable just staying at that number and swapping stuff out to try new things. And at this point, gas became less of a monetary issue and more of a creative issue really, which I think is the big struggle for a lot of people. It was taking my creative time and turning it into research time and post office run time and tinkering time. And that's almost like a completely different hobby in and of itself is just kind of like playing with these, these products. And it taught me a lot about different methods of affecting, you know, a signal. But for me, it wasn't where I wanted my priorities to be. I was trying to write songs for a band that I had started. And I found that it was kind of getting in the way. So in this next section, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can start using gas to your advantage. And I want to be clear that I'm kind of talking about the level of gas where you know you have all the gear you need. And maybe you just want to create that little spark of joy in your life with some retail therapy. Sometimes buying new gear is really important, and for example, I'll fully defend my Digitact, Digitone, and OP1 purchases that I've made over the past four years or so, because they were very directed and intentional, and I thought about them for a really long time before pulling the trigger. And I think that I've been able to be kind of more minimal about it recently because I've learned how to use gas to my advantage. And it's really quite simple if you've gotten to the point where you've amassed this collection where you have enough, and any gas that you might have is probably just out of boredom or potentially familiarity with your current setup. So I want you to do this. As soon as you find yourself gassing for, say, a guitar pedal, you're probably hearing some sounds in your head of you know, what that would sound like in your rig, conceptualizing how you might use it on a lead line you have or a chord progression that you've been dreaming up and how it could really, you know, give you that creative edge to finish that song. So what I want you to do at this point is to stop looking at the product immediately. Close your laptop, throw your phone into the ocean or whatever, and go to your current music gear. Take that seedling of an idea that was kind of getting inspired by the product you were looking at and make that idea happen on the gear you currently have. You can do it. Maybe if you're building a studio or starting a project, you actually do need an LFO module or a reverb pedal if you don't have one at all and you're starting a shoegaze band, for example. You want reverb, but I promise, nine times out of 10, you already have what you need to make your gassy fever dream happen. The point here is to do your research by playing, writing, recording, and making your god dang music. Don't do your research by spending hours on social media looking at Strymon hashtags. Just don't do it. They make some really great stuff and you know, you're gonna want it if you do that. But yeah, just take that you know, creative inspiration and energy you get from looking at a new synth toy 
and redirect that life into the music that you're making with the gear that you already have because the chances are you already have enough stuff. You just have to spend the time with it and get better as a musician and writer. So before jumping into this next section, I just wanted to let you all know that I recently created a Patreon where you can sign up for various tiers of rewards, including free downloads of my music, free downloads of unreleased gems from YouTube, and at the higher tiers, you can sign up for one-on-one -on -one sessions, you know, lessons and consultations for synths and electronic music. So there's some really cool stuff there. The funds from your memberships contribute directly toward the time and energy and efforts I put into making these videos and continuing to produce music for you all. So it really helps to keep the channel afloat and it helps to feed my dog Casper and she loves to eat. So the link is in the description and right here on the screen and it would be super awesome and mean a lot if you could go check it out. I really, really do appreciate every gram of your support. That is patreon.com slash slow haste. So at the end of the day, you have to be honest with yourself. I know that you know how to tell when gas has become too much of a problem and that threshold is going to be different for everyone, so I'm not going to try to tell another person when enough is enough. But once you realize it's an issue and you want to take action, get off of social media. And that can include YouTube as well, unless it's slow haste videos. You're allowed to watch, comment, like, subscribe, and share as many slow haste videos as you wish. But be honest with yourself. Where does your exposure to all of this new gear that you're gassing for come from? It's not the stupid Guitar Center catalogs that they're still sending to your apartment even though you've moved six times since you signed up for your gear card. No, it's the internet. It's gear companies' social media pages. It's synthfluencers. Maybe that's me even. Although I do try to be more so a resource for folks who already own the products that I make videos for. I understand that sometimes my fire beats might inspire a purchase or two and I do use affiliate links, so I definitely am guilty there. So yeah, if you're able to recognize your problem and identify the source of it, just stop the source of it. It can be hard, but it's just a simple decision you have to make. And give yourself a break from that and make yourself time to just go make music again. Because that's what it's all about, right? You got into this stuff because you wanted it to help you make music in the first place. Chase your creative ideas in your current studio with your current gear. Just try to practice that discipline. Again, only if you think you have a problem and you'll know when that is. I do want to bring up that I understand that there can be sort of a collector mentality with, you know, musical instruments and synthesizers. And you know what? That's okay. And it's totally cool. I think that collecting vintage gear can be a really cool hobby and pastime. There's a lot of history in a lot of devices and instruments. And a lot of people like to collect new products even. And I think that's really cool, especially if it's, you know, supporting small companies and helping them invest, you know, research and development into new products. And, you know, gas isn't always a problem in this context. Um, I want to drive home the point that it's up to the afflicted individual to, to determine whether or not it's become something they need to address, as I've just mentioned. I also want to bring up modular synths because, oh boy, if you think that guitar pedals can cause gas, don't get into modular. With modular, you really need a, a baseline, a group of modules to get yourself started. You can't just get one. And you want to be reasonable with how much you may expand your case, but at the same time, you don't want to limit yourself right as you're starting because that will just lead to another purchase of a larger case. So it takes a lot to find that sweet spot between, okay, I'm sticking to this case size no matter what, and if I double my case size, I'll be able to fit in the 26 HP double atomizer explosive delay distortion, and then you have an entire row to fill up once you upgrade to that bigger case, and you fill it up because having that space is a waste of money when you spent all this money on a case and you're not utilizing the space and then you fill it up and then you do it all over again with a new even bigger case and the cycle continues and that's exactly what happened to me with my first two cases luckily i did start relatively small and it didn't get too out of hand but um, i also want to mention that modular synths inspired and created the bulk of the sounds for two albums that i released so it was kind of worth it. But I recently downsized because I realized that after those two projects had been wrapped up, I wasn't using my modules to their full potential and I didn't want to have that sort of, you know, investment just hanging around in my studio. And the truth is, I haven't patched a single patch since I downsized my rig. I know I have a couple of videos about that and my process and my intentions, but I've just been so owned in on my Electron setup that I haven't touched my modular. And it really took a lot of learning for me to get to this point. And I think I've set myself up in a position with these Electron devices that I have so much to grow into, even with the two boxes, the Digitact and the Digitone, that I've been using a ton lately. So I've kind of been riding the gasless wave since my Digitone purchase, which I don't think was bought out of 
gas because I considered it for like six months and uh, I decided it was kind of the right thing for me based on my workflow. I actually kind of want to make a video about how buying a synth that you don't actually want is kind of the best thing you can do for yourself. Not that I didn't actually want the Digitone, but there was some more appealing stuff that I had to pull myself away from because of the workflow that I wanted to implement the Digitone into. Anyways, in summary, uh, Modular is wild and limitless and so expansive, but it is 100% the most dangerous game you can get yourself into if you might have an issue with gas. Just a fair warning from someone who has dodged a few bullets. So I wanna thank you all for hanging around today and sticking to the end if you're still here. Um, throw me your most regretted synth purchase or maybe your most favorite and valuable synth purchase down in the comments if you made it this far. Um, that's how I'll know you're the real ones. <laughs> so thanks again for sticking around. Hope you all have a lovely day and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.